In this tutorial, we're going to cover how to export a project out of Premiere Pro. So I've done the steps to complete my project. Now I'm ready to export this out. Now the way you export it out will be very dependent on how you want to use it after the fact. I'll go through maybe three of the, uh, the more common options when we go to export. Underneath our file menu, I'm going to choose the export option. And underneath I'm going to choose the media. One thing I should note that I should mention here. It's important when you go into the file export option to know which of your panels is the active panel. My active panel is my timeline. However, I could, if my source monitor was an active panel, again, an active panel is, is shown by the yellow lines or golden lines around that panel. If I go to file exports, my options, the media option that was there is now grayed out. So do pay attention on to which is your active panel. You can also export out specific clips in your project panel by having that highlighted then doing the file file export. Okay. So be so pay attention to to what panel is the active panel. I want to export out my project, which is this first sequence timeline. So I'm going to select that panel, go to file export, and choose media. In the Export Settings dialog box, which, which pops up here, you want to pay attention to this first option here on the right side of the panel at the top, which is the format. If I click on that drop-down, these are the various formats I could export it out as. If I'm going maybe to, if it's a smaller project, I can burn it to a CD. I want to burn it to a CD. I might choose this Microsoft AVI if it's going to stay on the Windows side of things. If I'm going to the web, either I'm going to choose, actually the one that I choose most often if I'm going to, to to put it on my website is this flash video, FLV or an F4V option. Or if I'm going to go to like a YouTube scenario, I might choose H.264. So let's experiment with these two so I can see the options with these two. I'm going to stick with the flash video. And then every format has a set of presets for that particular format. So I'm going to click on the drop down for the preset option for the flash video format. And these are the different options I have for the for the flash video. The F the difference between the F4V and FLV F4V is simply a a, a more recent version of flash video. FLV is is the older version, and it plays on different versions of the flash player. You'll you'll notice here F4V is nine dot flash player nine dot O or higher. The FLV is flash eight. And higher, so you can choose whichever which of the which whichever option best works for your scenario. I usually choose the FLVs, uh, web medium or web large, depending on on the size that I want. Okay, so that's the flash video option. Let's go back here and change the format to H.264. And let's say we want to export this out to go up on YouTube. So I'm going to choose H.264, and the presets for that. We actually do have an option for YouTube. So if you're using, if you're going to place your videos on, on, online somewhere, on one of the video online options, you might choose the the H.264 format and then choose the appropriate preset depending on where you're going to place your video. So I'm going to choose. This is actually an S SD project. So we'll do the, we'll just do a, an SD option here. So I set my options there from the format and the preset. What those do when I've set those two options, it sets the settings for these options down here in these various tabs. If I wanted to tweak that a bit, I could go down here and do so. I'm going to make sure my, I'm exporting video and audio by having both of those on. I'm going to deselect or leave this deselected open in Device Central. Device Central just pre will give you a preview of how that looks on various devices, different cell phones, etc. And then I'm going to click on, after I have all my settings where I want them, click on Q. What that will do is it's going to open up the media encoder, which we'll see here shortly. And it places it inside the Q for the media encoder. So it places it here in the Q. If I went to click on the settings option, this is where I could actually change how much of the clip is actually going to be built here inside 
inside the MIDI encoder. But I'm going to leave things as is. Click OK. Go back to my Q option. And then I'm just going to simply click Start Q. I do want to pay attention. It, de it defaults to placing this inside whatever the output file said here. It's going to place it inside where my project is being saved. If I wanted to save it somewhere else, I could simply click on the output file before I click on the Start queue to, to specify where to save it. So as it progresses through here, we see it, the bar going across here at the bottom. And when it's completed being built, we'll see the check mark of the status green check mark saying yeah it has been it has been built